Hey everyone, AYBL Maine here, and it is Sunday, a little bit humid today here in Maine, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and get this out of the way, get my top five albums for every year that I've been alive. I'm at year 33, big 2001, and uh, maybe a little bit of a heavier year than I would normally have in this time frame, but it works out how it works out, guys, so here's my top five for uh, the year 2001. Uh, in my top five is Tools Lateralis. Uh, what a great art rock album. If anybody's into progressive metal at all, you definitely should be listening to Tool to begin with. It's got uh, Schism on here. It's got the title track, uh, Parabola, and leads, which leads right into Parabola. Uh, such good music here, guys. Well layered, well structured, well thought out, intelligent art rock. You should definitely give it a listen if you're into that sort of thing. Also in my top five, I've got uh, Jay-Z's The Blueprint. Uh, he'll have some more recurring ones of this one, but this is by far the best. Um, definitely the beginning of that Rockefeller uh, sound uh, that you'll hear in other rap artists that are going to be uh, either produced or influenced by Jay-Z. Uh, say what you want about the guy. He is an entrepreneur. Uh, very, uh, very thoughtful and uh, resilient businessman. Um, some tracks on here you might want to check out is definitely Izzo, The Ruler's Back, Girls, Girls, Girls. Uh, it's definitely an album to check out for sure if you're into hip-hop at all. Uh, a landmark album to be sure. Just making my top five also. Uh, I went back and forth on this one a little bit. But I took another one of uh, Damien um, Albarn's uh, projects here, The Gorillas. It's a self-titled album. Uh, you know, the guys with the freaky little cartoon uh, videos uh, with uh, four caricatures of, them, of the band members themselves. It's, it's, it's interesting stuff. The album itself is fantastic, guys. I listened to 19, uh, 2000 and also listened to Clint Eastwood. It's uh, just a unique sound all the way together. And, and you wouldn't expect anything different from Damien than that type of music. So um, it's, it's an album that I think was important. And it influenced a lot of the other alternative acts that were going to come right after this. So check it out. Uh, also making my top five is The Strokes. Is this it? Kind of this post-punk type of uh, sound that, you know, I, I hate the fact that they hype the band so much that it, you almost doom it for failure. But this album was fantastic. It's got Last Night on here. Hard to explain. Um, Someday also comes to mind as a, definitely a good track from there. Give it a listen. It's unlike anything that you're going to hear before that. Um, and they haven't been able really to replicate that on any other subsequent albums. And that's unfortunate. But this album definitely deserved to be in my top five. But number one for me for 2001 was System of the Downs Toxicity. Uh, wow. Just this great, thrashy, alternative rock sound. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Serge's uh, voice is just indistinguishable from anybody else's I mean no not is distinguishable from anybody else's voice out there he's just fantastic um, some tracks on there obviously is the title track and then Ariel's which has got this really great ha haunting uh, uh, side to it that's that's really interesting the video is really creepy um, also a great video was uh, this track was Chop Suey um, what a great thrashy <laughs> thrashy type of sound it was so awesome i remember my um english teacher from high school uh telling me that he had to be in a that he had to be in a band he wanted to be in a band and they played mostly uh modern rock music and he said he had to learn how to play chop suey and i'm like well good luck uh that's all i could give him for advice so it's definitely going to give you a workout no matter what so that's my number one uh you know i know it's a little bit of kind of a they consider, I don't know why they categorize these guys as new metal. They're not. This album is just fantastic. So it's a little bit different from what I normally would have listed here in this time frame. But it's definitely worth it. For, as for the album that everybody said I would like, but I actually didn't. And I didn't say love. I, I said like in this instance. Because the album's not terrible. But I have a really high bar for Bob Dylan. And Love and Theft just kind of fell really flat to me. I did enjoy one of the songs, Mississippi. Uh, but nothing much else on that album kind of stuck it, stood out to me, and I was really kind of disappointed with it all together. Uh, so if I were ranking Bob Dylan albums, this would be way toward the bottom, um, and that's kind of unfortunate. That and Tempest kind of just fall down in this 
latter part of albums that I would rank. So Bob Dylan's Love and Theft is the album that everybody said I would like, but I actually didn't. So, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I got 2002 hopefully coming your way on Wednesday. I've got uh, some more basketball stuff to wrap up here in the earlier part of the week. But I hope to catch you guys then. Take care.